Hi everyone, I'm Marissa Sarbach. Welcome to The Buzz, Newsday's weekly series covering the hottest trends in music, movies, television, and so much more. Our guest today is an actress who starred in some absolute favorite movies and TV shows from the 90s, including Clueless, Beverly Hills 90210, and Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Actress and now author, Elisa Donovan from Northport. Hi Elisa, welcome to The Buzz. Hi, thanks for having me. We are so excited to have you with us. Now I know our tone for this show is going to be a little bit different than usual because we do want to hear about your new book. It's a memoir about some pretty tough topics. You cover love, loss, and hardship. So what originally sparked the idea for Wake Me When You Leave? Well, it basically encompasses uh, the period of time where I lost my dad to cancer. Sabrina was canceled and the relationship that I was in ended with the person I thought I was going to marry. So over the course of this very short period of time, I was essentially stripped of everything that made my life make sense to me and everything that kind of gave me a sense of safety and purpose. And um, my dad started to come to me in dreams and otherworldly sort of experiences that really helped me to heal and to it really changed my life pretty dramatically how long it's it also funny though it's also funny because i'm inherently a funny person so uh it's also humorous but it's pretty uh deep how long have you been working on it so my dad passed away years ago in uh, 2004, and I first did this as a one-woman show, as a play at the Geffen Theater in Los Angeles, and then I started to write it as a book, and I put it aside, and then I got married and had a baby, and then I wrote it as a film, and the film is now in development, and then about two years ago, I went back to the book and... Um, started really more seriously writing it and then the deal came together right as the entire world was shutting down i honestly um the I, I signed the deal i think the day after my daughter's last day of school last spring <laughs> so it was a very strange process to be writing this book about grief and loss while kind of the whole world felt like it was also grieving in a strange way. So it's a long process that essentially all came together in the past year and a half to two years. And I know you said you're not new to writing. You've also written pieces for Chicken Soup for the Soul. You've been voted reader favorite as a celebrity mom blogger for People.com. But an entire memoir like this, it seems like it really would be a whole new challenge and an extremely personal one during this very difficult time for a lot of people. Definitely. I mean, you know, this whole year has changed everyone's lives just exponentially and, and differently for everyone, depending on your individual circumstances. And, you know, just the, the, logistics, the logistics of having to write at home while my daughter has been distance learning in her bedroom and my husband is working in the guest room and you know it was uh, a challenge to say the least and um my daughter's back in school now and she's been on campus four days a week so that's been a blessing for everybody <laughs> um but it's uh you know it's been an incredibly challenging challenging year and i really hope that that this book uh gives people a lot of hope when they are going through challenges and grief in particular and you know it's a long labyrinthine road that uh, you have to kind of just walk through and I ultimately really think it's a hopeful book and I hope that that people get a lot of uh, peace and kind of hope from it. I, I feel like you've really explained it very well. You know, we're excited to see it come out. And I feel like you've taken so many difficult times in your life, including a difficult time during the pandemic, and you've really channeled this energy into something that's inspirational. It's, it seems like you're showing the audience that they can really make it through anything if you can make it through all of these things. I really, I, first of all, thank you for saying that. Um, and I, that, that elates me because that's what I, 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 I want people to to really take away from it that, you know, I think in our culture, especially, we don't, we're not comfortable with discomfort. 
you know, and we don't want to be um, difficult things and challenging things can feel like they're ugly or we want to hide them. And, you know, I really think that these things are a part of life and, and we all go through challenges of varying sorts and these things, we can really come through them with a greater sense of, of humanity and of what real joy is. And uh, I think, you know, when we can take these things as an opportunity to, to expand our, our, ourselves and enhance our lives, that's kind of the point, you know, that things happen and it doesn't have to be the end in any way. Alisa, how much can we expect you to touch on your time in Hollywood in the new book? I, I, there are definitely Hollywood stories um, because, and um, a few boyfriends uh, who, who everyone's names have been changed. Uh, so there, since it, this all happened while I was uh, finishing up Sabrina, there's was a little bit of that. And then when I, the, the first couple of jobs I had in that year, um, I definitely talk about because it was, you know, my first time going back to work amidst all of this uh, turmoil. And, you know, in, a, in an odd way, which I talk about in the book, all of the, the roles that I was playing were in some way mirroring things that were going on in my life. So it was a, a, a somewhat surreal experience that, you know, while it was happening, it was surreal, but especially when I look back on it, I think, you know, this idea that everything happens in the way it should and the timing is this kind of otherworldly thing, it, it, it's really proven to be true for me. <laughs> Do you miss working on projects like Clueless and Sabrina? Uh, do I admit, I, I love acting. I know that I will always keep acting and, but the, the film version of this book, which is in development, I will be directing and I am not going to be in as an actress, but I definitely want to go back to acting too. So I do admit when I, when I'm writing, I don't miss it, but then in the in-between times, I, I, I miss it. I miss that collaborative kind of, uh, work. So yeah, I look forward to going back to it. Well, it's interesting to see you have so many facets in your career, and I'm excited to see the next one for you. I know that you live out in California now, but originally a Long Islander, so I do want to know how often do you get back? <laughs> I was just actually uh, doing a, a podcast for a friend of mine who also is from Long Island. And um, so my family lives in North Carolina, and they have lived there for many years when I moved to L.A. They left Long Island. Um, so... I, every time I go back to New York City, which is fairly, well, in the past year, I haven't been back at all. But normally. <laughs> historically, normally, um, I almost every time that I go to the city, I go out to Long Island to see friends. And the last time we were there, I brought my husband and my daughter because they had never seen the town I grew up in. And we went to my high school and, um, you know, I just kind of showed them my old house that I grew up in. And it's changed so much and I, I don't have as many friends there anymore. A lot of people have moved, but I, it's one of my favorite places. I loved growing up there. I loved it. It's a great town. And when you came yeah. back, I have to know, did you bring them to get pizza and bagels? Yes. <laughs> you have to. Yes. Pizza and bagels. Well, my husband is from New Jersey, so he has some, you know, sense of it, but there's always that little, uh, competition between Long Island and yes. New Jersey, right? That's a so big competition. I, <laughs> yes, I obviously am partial to Long Island, and I make be. it very clear that that is true. <laughs> hey, Elisa, once a Long Islander, always a Long Islander. Actress and author, Elisa Donovan, great to have you with us. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. This was great. Great to have you with us. Thank you. For more on actress and author Elisa Donovan and other Buzz guests, head on over to Newsday.com slash The Buzz. Elisa's new book, Wake Me When You Leave, will be available on June 8th. Can't wait to give it a read. For Newsday's The Buzz, I'm Marissa Sarbach.